You know, it's almost as if the Democrats and our politicians, both Democrats and Republicans, there say they they they, they want us to riot. It's almost as though they 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 think so little of us that we'll just accept the crumbs. And the thing is, folks, the American people, and I don't care if you're conservative or libertarian, green or socialist, liberal, whatever. I don't care. I don't care how you're going to vote. I don't give a damn what generation you're part of, who you worship, the color of your skin. We are all Americans, and this isn't open for debate. Our politicians are screwing us up the wazoo. The economy's in free fall. There's strikes all over. There's political instability. There's economic instability. We got an entire World War III around the horizon. Some can argue that it's already started. But nonetheless, nonetheless, what we find interesting is that when the corporations, the corporate donors who own our politicians and media, when the corporations and the banks and Wall Street fail miserably, when they go belly up, they get bailed out. We have seen how Ukraine has got billions upon billions upon billions of dollars, as has Israel. Whereas you, the U.S. citizen, you could be in Georgia, Georgia, or Hawaii, or Ohio, or New York, or Texas, Illinois. No, no matter what state you are, you are the last thing our politicians are going to think about. Which, again, I am still surprised that there are many good Americans perhaps misled, perhaps still believing that their vote matters, that thinks that the Democrats and Republicans care for you because we got hit with a hurricane. Now, Illinois didn't get hit, but my fellow Americans did in Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina and other outlying states and cities. But guess what? I may never meet them, but I know I deserve dignity and respect. But yet Kamala Harris says FEMA is giving $750. Oh, hey, hey, don't spend it all in one spot for folks who need immediate needs being met. And that the president has approved the governor's request for 100% federal reimbursement of local costs. But $750. Oh. Oh, wow. That's, you know what that is? That's 50 bucks more. That's a Ulysses grant. That's more than what the people in the great state of Hawaii especially those who were hit on Maui and Lahaina got. Now, I don't know how many of those seven people are going to get that 750 bucks, but $750, huh? $750 after people lose everything. Don't worry, folks. It's like, this, this is what I mean when I say the politicians do not like us. They don't think about us and they don't respect us, but you don't have to believe me. Kamala, take it away. The president and I um, have been paying close attention from the beginning to um, what we need to do to make sure the federal resources hit the ground as quickly as possible. And that includes uh, what was necessary to make sure that we provided direct federal assistance. And that work has been happening. I want to thank the governor um, for his leadership and his close coordination with the federal government, with our administration. And I want to thank the local leaders for together creating a task force like response, knowing that we are at our best when we work together and coordinate resources, coordinate our communications to the maximum effect for the community that has been um, impacted. Uh, and the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750. $750. So that's seven Benjamins and the Ulysses S. Grant. You know, I know why Ben Franklin's smiling on our U.S. currency. He was never president. Okay, that was like a dad joke, but whatever. Huh? I, I, I find it funny. I find it funny. Leave me alone. Put down your tomatoes. Uh, and the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met, such as food, baby formula, and the like. And you can apply now for anyone who's watching this who has been affected. There are FEMA personnel who are going door to door to interact personally with folks, especially those who do not have electricity. But also um, that, that aid, if you have electricity, can be applied for online. And I encourage people to do that. FEMA will just basically verify your address and then process should take 
um, hold. FEMA is also providing tens of thousands more dollars for folks to help them be able to deal with home repair, um, to be able to cover a deductible when and if they have insurance and also hotel cost. Now, if you've been paying attention to the economy, you'll notice right off the bat. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. That's $750. I'm going to quote one of my audience members here. $750 will last a week for some, a day for others. Um, today, I'm also announcing that the president has approved the governor's request for 100% federal reimbursement of local costs. And Mayor, as you have pointed out, the, the burden to local governments, including state, the state government is, is pretty immense. And so by announcing today and, and making the dedicated resources to cover 100% of local costs will have a huge impact on our ability to get relief to people as quickly as possible. And that will include, for example, what the federal government will do to reimburse local and state governments around issues like debris removal, which you can see just up and down this street, much less in other areas of the state and in the region. Um, this is a big issue. Uh oh, wow. Big, huge issue. Big, giant issue that's so big that's in your face. But here we are. Here we are again with this madness and stupidity. But $750. But folks, this isn't the first time we've been insulted by this. My fellow Americans, this happened last year in August. I'm going to pull up this article here just because, listen, listen. If you live in Georgia, Florida, North Carolina, or any other state that's been impacted by the hurricane, this happened to our fellow Americans before, to what happened to the victims of Maui. President Joe Biden is facing renewed criticism for his response to the devastating wildfires on the Hawaiian island of Maui after offering victims $700 per household in emergency aid. Now, again, this article, why am I reading this? Because it's very relevant to what's happening now. $700, the American people. And again, this is household, household, household. Individual people getting it? Yeah, good luck. Joe Biden sending $700. And this is, again, came out. August 15th, 2023, this is the aftermath of the wildfire that hit all those poor people in Maui. Well, let's continue on. Political opponents and commentators described the sum as insulting, compared it with more than $113 billion worth of aid U.S. has sent to Ukraine then at the time. $113 billion worth of aid. Isn't that something? As it defends itself against the, an ongoing Russian invasion on Monday, the government announced it's sending $200 million in defensive capabilities. Again, this article came out in 2023, but it's very relevant because we're still sending billions of dollars of aid to Ukraine and Israel, all the while the American people, while well, you're left out there shivering in the cold, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. What do you think this is? America? Listen, Georgia, North Carolina, Florida, and everybody else, your biggest mistake was not renaming your state into Ukraine. That's how you would have got the money. Continuing on, Biden has previously, oops, sorry, Biden has previously faced backlash over what some has, some saw as dismissive response to the death toll on Maui, brushing off questions about the disaster while spending the weekend at his Delaware beach house. Aw, isn't that special? After the first fatalities were announced on Wednesday, Biden expressed his deepest condolences to the families of those who had died in a statement. He added that he was grateful to the brave firefighters and first responders who continued to run towards danger, putting themselves in harm ways to save lives. Yes, but too bad the alert, early alert system didn't help out the people of Maui, right? Uh, the following the, the following day, he declared a federal disaster uh, in Hawaii, making federal uh, funding available to individuals affected by the fires for things such as temporary housing and loans to cover uninsured losses. It's going to take a great deal of time to recover from this, but we have the support from every level of government, especially given President Biden's approval of our disaster declaration request, Hawaiian Governor Josh Green wrote in a recent post. Well, still doesn't matter because the people behind are still recovering. And I have a follow-up article about that. So far, 96 people have lost their lives and more than 1,000 remain unaccounted for as emergency responders comb burned homes for human remains. Green said that he was certain that the number of deaths would rise in the coming days, but that identifying bodies was taking time. By the way, you want to know what's not being counted right now? The homeless who died when the hurricane hit Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, all of that. 
Large brush fires on Maui caused power outage, mass evacuations, and extensive destruction to the historic resort town of Lahaina. The fires broke out early last week and spread rapidly on hurricane-driven winds from a passing storm. Only $700 per household to help rebuild a Lahaina. Joe Biden, Carrie Lake, the unsuccessful Republican candidate for Arizona governor, responded, we're spending $900 per household to fund your proxy war in Ukraine. Don't forget Israel. Don't forget Israel. But here we are. We're, we're, we're back. It's full circle again. Full circle again. Full circle again. Our politicians are leaving us high and dry. We're not getting a bailout. We're not going to be taken care of. But where's the response, liberals? Liberals, why is it that you're okay with sending all this money for war? Liberals, I remember a time when you guys would be on the streets protesting, screaming out from the rooftop about how dangerous these wars are. I, I remember a time when there was an anti-war movement, or at least somewhat of an anti-war movement. Now, I'm not expecting the United States government to help out the American people because you know what's going to happen? Here's what's going to happen. Yes, there will be reconstruction, but you want to know what's going to happen? So many people are severely impacted by the devastating lockdowns of 2020 that this is just another gut check to their livelihoods. So many people might have to sell their homes or leave altogether. So many people are going to be left with absolutely nothing, except for a one-time $750. Good luck collecting it. Good luck getting it. I mean, it's not going to be enough. $750? Hey, folks, what could $750 do for you? Or do you think that we deserve more? Now, I'm going to say all the people who have been affected by the hurricane deserve, deserve a good bailout, a good relief package. But perhaps the problem is, is that we're asking our politicians to give a damn about us. We're asking our politicians to please, please help but they're not going to do it. $750 of relief. This is a nation, a nation on decline. You know, we joke about this being the fall of the Roman Empire, but one more time, Kamala, one more time, one more time, one more time. Let's pull up this tab right here, just so all of you could see it. Kamala, let's take it away. With the federal government, with our administration, and I want to thank the local leaders for together, creating a task force like response, knowing that we are at our best when we work together and coordinate resources, coordinate our communications to the maximum effect for the community that has been um, impacted. Uh, and the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met, such as food, baby formula, and the like. And you can apply now for anyone who's watching this who has been affected. There are FEMA personnel who are going door to door to interact personally with folks, especially those who do not have electricity, but also um, that, that But All this is a word salad, sorry. <clears throat> all what this is, is just a word salad. All what it is, is a word salad. And even now as we speak, people are giving and sharing. Augusta comes together as Kamala Harris surveys the damage. As Kamala Harris ascended on Wednesday into Augusta, she met a city contemplating how much of their lives have been unmade by Hurricane Helena. I'm here to personally take a look at the devastation, Harris said after receiving a briefing by emergency response leaders in Georgia. It's particularly devastating in terms of the loss of life that this community has experienced, the loss of normalcy, the loss of critical resources. Our infrastructure is falling apart because of these massive superstorms. Kamala, Kamala, are you not paying attention? Or maybe you are. But the Augusta area hasn't quite drawn the national attention given to western North Carolina with its washed out roads and severe flooding. Augusta still marginally functional. Hurricane Helena shaved the land here with a dull razor. The damage resembles a tornado strike more than a hurricane, said Leroy Redfield, describing pockets of destruction uh, that make what survived all the more remarkable. But folks, it's not enough. It's never going to be enough. We're being abandoned again. We're being left behind again. 
And, you know, I gave this warning on Hard Lens Media with the aftermath of the devastating and horrific wildfires of Lahaina. We were all Lahaina. Those are U.S. citizens there who lost everything from that devastating wildfire from 2023. They had to rebuild their lives. And did the Democratic Party, did Joe Biden help them out? No. One time, $700. Now, for all the people who have been impacted by the hurricane, one time, $750. You get nothing, and you're supposed to shut up. I'm not going to say that this is going to maybe change people's minds in regards to Kamala or Joe Biden. But this should add more fuel and more resentment to the Democrats. We're seeing how billions of dollars go to war. And we see how billions of dollars go to bail out corporations. If you're not angry, you should be. And yes, this is going to weigh in on some people's decision in regards to who the hell they're going to vote for. Get angry, folks. We're being left behind. As I said before last year, we were all Lahaina. We're all Georgia. We're all Florida. We're all North Carolina. We saw what happened to the people of East Palestine, Ohio. We saw what happened to the people of Flint, Michigan. No matter where you go, if there's a man-made disaster or a natural disaster, and people's lives are turned upside down, the 100% certainty is your government isn't going to give a damn about you. Idolatry, that's just fake. And all that wallowing that you tolerate, that's not faith. The kings of colony, white stars on me, make our graves. The kings of colony know no policy, only rave. Now, once you fall asleep, it won't bother you what they say. But the kings of colony, while they slaughter, they still complain. And we say, please color me still too solemnly, still too plain. All hail economy, praise the pharmacy, sees in flames. They're buying up Hawaii. And the smoke's not even cleared. Those vultures smelled the fire and an enterprise appeared. Investment opportunities were melted down. Communities leave vacant space. BlackRock has been lusting for for years. The council meets in private and they don't discuss survivors. Concerns among construction groups are all the hyena hears. They'll wander through your city with this mocking sword of pity next to Oprah and her camera crew who tore the trail of tears. Where footage flows as freely as the stream of liquid steel and the pools of pure aluminum that trickled down your wheels and Biden's here to say he knows exactly how it feels cause he had a kitchen fire once and had to miss a meal and people still believe that piece of shit deserves your vote like he's not why supplies are being smuggled in by boat like he's not why our citizens were forced to stay and roast and he can't unfreeze your funding folks cause Azov needs it most I'll bet my every dollar Biden watched it with a smile I'll bet he knows the whereabouts of every missing child he's just the kind of man who lives to trample something tribal collecting cultures corpses just to throw them on the pile like he and all his buddies didn't dream about the day when those who dared defy the donor class were cleared away when home insurance triples and you can't afford to stay and your land falls to the hands of those whose windfall fanned the flames the state will take lahaina and they'll bastardize its name and tourism will swarm it all the same you see the state we left Lahaina shows the ground rules of the game, the planes that in the night ignite the planes. And if questions raised that reckon the potential use of lasers, I suggest you take a closer shave by way of Occam's razor. And if those civilians stood between this country and its gains, then there's really nothing further to explain. Because you may know this already, 
if you truly know our past but it ain't the first occasion and it will not be the last where americans are kettled in and made to bear the blast are barricaded in and left for ash how many in lahaina now are lying there awake and still can hear the city we left leveled in our wake. They still hear all the people that we let the fire take, instructed from above to stay in place. So look to the horizon, because a fire comes for you. Desire made incarnate of the power-hungry few who instructed the police to not let anybody through, to barricade them in, and so they do.